Uh, thank you, Rich. Uh, always fun to get to do these uh, webinars, and uh, they always start off with Rich saying uh, awesome uh, uh, things about me. Uh, so I'll say something really awesome about uh, Rich. Uh, I was actually uh, co-CCI uh, of the year uh, last year, not uh, the only one. So that means that somebody else actually uh, tied me, and that was my own co-worker, uh, Kent, who also uh, uh, works for uh, Layer 8. And so uh, you got to give Rich and Todd credit for uh, putting together a team that uh, can actually accomplish a uh, pretty miraculous feat like that. So uh, definitely excited to uh, get to talk about some cool things today. Uh, always excited about uh, these webinars and getting to come up with uh, uh, new things. And um, so hopefully you're going to learn a couple of really uh, awesome uh, tidbits that uh, you didn't necessarily know. Some of this is going to be uh, some really bleeding edge stuff. So uh, you may hear some things that uh, may make you think uh, differently about certain things. And that uh, is really kind of the goal with that. And so uh, as we go in and kind of take a look at this, there are some big changes. Uh, obviously, uh, in the naming of the product, we've gone from uh, being a uh, Netscaler, uh, which should have been a Netscaler ADC. We didn't necessarily call it uh, the ADC part. Uh, but now they're going to rebrand it into the Citrix ADC. Uh, and so we've got uh, changes from the naming convention. We've got changes with versions. We've got changes with all sorts of things. And uh, so hopefully it is an eye-opening experience for you. Uh, there may not necessarily be some of the takeaways where I'm going to definitively say, hey, everybody needs to go do this. But uh, if I can go in and expose a little bit of some of the new stuff that's out there, make you think about it, make you keep it in the uh, back of your mind, as we move forward and as uh, things change uh, and uh, get bigger and bigger and bigger and better and better, uh, hopefully some of these things are going to go in and uh, really kind of uh, uh, be helpful to you. So we're going to go and talk about the platforms. Uh, it seemed like I just did this and uh, we we're adding a new uh, platform to the list uh, and now we're doing it again. So uh, some of you guys, you may not have heard of the uh, BLX and that is not a typo. Uh, I know uh, traditionally we've got uh, a lot of things in here with NPX and VPX uh, and CPX. Uh, now we've got a BLX and so we'll talk about what that is. We'll continue the discussion about 32-bit versus 64-bit. Uh, there's been some really neat um, announcements about uh, life cycle changes uh, and so uh, even over the last uh, seven or eight months there's been some uh, guidance that Citrix has given us about different versions and how that's going to play out. We'll dig into that. Probably one of the big things from a hands-on perspective has been uh, the uh, policy engine uh, changes. So uh, for those of you guys that have worked with the Netscan, you've worked with the classic engine, uh, you've worked with the advanced engine, uh, Citrix has really kind of re-upped that uh, desire to get rid of the uh, classic engine and to really go in and kind of change things. And so there's a couple of uh, uh, big things we're watching out for as that uh, comes down the road. Also, that is kind of at the uh, center of some changes with the uh, authentication. Again, I said Netscale in there, should be ADC, but you get the general idea. And uh, there's some changes coming with authentication and uh, only part of them are gonna be to blame on the uh, classic versus the advanced. And so I'll go in and kind of show you a little bit of that. And then uh, we've also got the concept of uh, the uh, application delivery management tool. Uh, so you've got the ADC and the ADM. For those of you guys that want the old school names, that's your Netscaler. And then uh, the ADM is going to be the management and uh, analytics system. That's the MAS appliance. So uh, some neat changes that come into uh, play with that as well. So exciting stuff to go in and talk about. So uh, with your hardware platforms, uh, good news, certain things stay the same. And so what you've got is you've got your hardware platforms. Traditionally, that's been the MPX. So uh, what's been around the longest, it's that you would buy a physical Netscaler. Uh, and uh, so that's alive and well. Um, if you look at the Netscaler data sheets, you might see some different uh, models that are out there. Uh, two big things that I've really seen is uh, number one, they've gone in and really kind of done some big changes with port configurations. So going in and making models that are just going to support uh, above and beyond uh, the 10 gig ports. So we've got 40 and 50 gig and 100 gig port uh, configurations. So depending on your model, you've got some hardware that can do some uh, really neat uh, capabilities there. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with it, we've got the virtual appliance, you've got your VPX. Traditionally, this is a virtual appliance running on your own hypervisor. And so it allows you to go in and stand that up. You can get a license and traditionally push one meg 
uh, if you're doing one of the free or the dev versions, you've got uh, 10 meg, 200 meg, gigabit, and three gigabit uh, options out there. They've made some huge changes on the virtual appliance where they've gone in and uh, you've got access to what's called SRIOV. So as you roll out a virtual appliance, you can now give it direct access to the networking hardware. So if you've got a 10 gig port on your physical hardware, you can create a VM and give it access to a 10 gig NIC. So it can now push 10 gigs of throughput. So they've started making VPXs that can go in and follow that model as well. And so uh, we can now do five gig, uh, 10 gig, 20 gig, 40 gig, and even 100 gigs. Okay? And so uh, we've kind of seen a huge change in that. We used to do three gig models uh, about two years ago. Now we can go in and use our own hardware and push a uh, virtual appliance out that can do 800 gigs of uh, throughput. And so what you've got is this uh, virtual appliance that lets us go in and kind of step that up on our own hardware and be a little bit uh, uh, cheaper in terms of the overall price, but you're obviously getting the hardware from somewhere else and getting the hypervisor from somewhere else. Now, a combination of the two of those is gonna be the SDX platform. And so uh, you've got the uh, new changes that I mentioned to the hardware. Also something else I didn't mention with the MPX is they've got rid of some of the old models that got them on the end of life schedule. And some of the new models they've brought in, they've really tried to up that SSL capability. So uh, when you go in and get a 10 gig model, it can actually do 10 gigs of SSL. Uh, we've actually seen that be a little bit uh, of an issue in the past. Now with the new platforms that are kind of surviving, you're gonna see higher SSL performance geared to kind of match uh, what we see on the overall throughput. But with the SDX platform, instead of it being a piece of hardware and having one general set of specs, you've got the ability to combine virtualization on top of it. So it's physical hardware from Citrix and it's virtualization to go in and carve it up as needed. So depending on which hardware platform you get, you've got the ability to go in and carve that into different instances and use uh, up to the aggregate of whatever your capabilities are. So if you've got a uh, 10 gig appliance, you can go in and carve that up into a uh, couple of different uh, instances. Uh, and so uh, as we need to, gives us the ability to go in and kind of set that up and then scale that um, as needed. So back in the day, we had multiple net scalers. Uh, so you had a net scaler internally, you had a net scaler uh, in the DMZ, uh, maybe you had net scalers for your Microsoft stuff versus net scalers for your Citrix stuff. And you ran into this whole uh, net scaler sprawl. And uh, now we can consolidate. So you buy one piece of hardware, you carve it up and create your instances for those general uh, use cases. And it works really well for getting us all in-house on one appliance uh, that we can go in and centrally manage and uh, reprovision as needed. So if we need a faster net scaler, it's very simple to go in and say, change the specs, reboot, and it comes back up good. Uh, now, those are actually uh, pretty much the core of the uh, net scaler family that we've been working with. Now we're calling that the uh, uh, ADC family. And so what you've got is you've got these core um, functionalities we've been using for uh, many, many years. A little bit newer on the scene is going to be the Linux Docker. And what this is, is this is where you've got a Linux machine and you go in and spin up uh, a Netscaler uh, as a container. And so you create this container object, you dig in and say, okay, I want to be able to go in and do some of my core Netscaler functionality. And really what this is, is this is a Netscaler for your application development guys. So for your DevOps lifecycle, uh, here's a Netscaler for those guys. And this is uh, where those of us that have been around the Netscaler, we brag about all sorts of cool stuff that we can do with it. Uh, or you come and take one of our classes and you find out how to do all sorts of cool stuff. And you're like, hey, guess what I learned? And so we brag about all sorts of neat things that our Netscaler can do. And these app developers, they get this look in their eye and they say, man, it would have been nice if I'd have had that functionality. Would have been nice if I had rewrite as a part of my DevOps uh, process. Would be nice if I had responder. It'd be nice if I had load balancing. It'd be nice if I had content switching. And so there's a lot of net scalar functionality that is really, really cool. And these guys would have loved to have had access to it while they're developing uh, apps and things. And so Citrix has answered the call. This is a scaled down net scalar functionality. 
And when I say scale down, it gets rid of a lot of the networking side of it. Okay? You don't want to bring in the app guys and try to go in and present them with all of the NetScaler networking functionality. And uh, that's going to go in and really kind of overwhelm them. And so what's going to happen is we can go in and get rid of that and say, okay, just spin up this Docker. You're going to have an IP address for that Docker. And then it's packets in, packets out. What do you want to do with those packets? And so the CPX is designed to really provide a fine-tuned feature set for how to go in and do things with those applications. And in the perfect world, it works really well with the other platforms. So you've got your MPX and SDX or a VPX, and it's doing all of the central networking functionality that we need. And then on a per app basis, we got the guys that know what applications are, the guys that know how to go in and refine those applications, doing NetScaler application level stuff. And so it can really create a, a neat complement to what we're doing. It can unburden certain uh, admins by going in and actually letting the guys that develop the applications fine tune those applications. And then on the traditional NetScaler uh, and uh, Citrix ADC side, we go in and focus on the more big picture. And so there's a lot of neat stuff that comes up from that. Uh, also, they're going in and doing some neat stuff on the update side and really going in and improving this uh, version by version. So seeing a little bit of the uh, stuff for us. Now, new player in the game. Okay? So something that's going to be really exclusive to kind of uh, ADC version 13 is the BLX and what abilities as a process on Linux. End of story. And so what happens is some people go in and say, well, is this a virtual machine? Is it hardware? The answer is who cares? It's a Linux thing. So it is a Linux uh, OS running on hardware. So if you want to buy hardware and you want to stand up a version of Linux and then you want to make the NetScaler run on top of it, you can. And we're not talking about virtualization. We're not talking about a VPX on top of a hypervisor. We're talking about an ADC process on Linux. If you want to have a hypervisor and you want to spin up a Linux machine, then yes, you can go in and add the ADC process to that Linux virtual machine. Okay? But we can also do this on uh, 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 hardware as well. And so it gives us the ability to go in and extend out what we can go in and run this on. Here's where this is going to really start paying dividends. I see a lot of people that want to go to the cloud. I see a lot of people that want to play around in the cloud. And when you go with a VPX, it can be a little bit of a robust uh, deployment. When you go into something like uh, Amazon or Azure and you say, okay, I need a NetScaler, uh, and it's going to spin up a VM and charge you per hour, that's kind of a robust uh, um, offering. If you go in and say, just give me a machine and stick Linux on it, uh, that can be significantly cheaper. Now, is it going to have the same scalability capabilities? Probably not. But you can now go in and say, okay, just give me a Linux machine, physical, virtual, cloud, central data center, whatever, and uh, let's add Netscaler to it. And so they've got some neat things that we can go in and do with this where it's going to extend the abilities to actually do Netscaler stuff in different places. And so uh, I see a lot of people that uh, are really going to like this from the uh, 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 dev environment. Just go in and actually uh, stand up a Linux box and then do Netscaler stuff. I'm going to see people that are going to like this in the cloud. Let's roll out a uh, machine in the uh, cloud and do uh, uh, Netscaler stuff on it. So really exciting. Uh, this is part of your uh, 13.0 um options and so this is something that's uh fairly new just came out with that uh, offering and then we can go in and add this uh whatever hardware you, of your choice could be physical virtual whatever uh they've got uh, oracle and centos linux that you can go in and use and add this functionality on top of and so uh, some neat things that are out there uh, especially for those of you guys that are looking at uh rolling out dev environments playing around with this uh things like that you might want to go and take a look at uh, what this uh, has to offer and so you can go in and bring this in, kind of stand this up and uh, play around with it. And then it's also really going to be uh, really valuable as we get into some of the other scenarios where we're looking at uh, virtualizing our data centers or moving data centers to the cloud, being able to go in and use pooled bandwidth, being able to assign it to a CPX or a VPX, and now even to a uh, BLX uh, instance. So a lot of neat things that we're going to be able to do um, as part of the big picture. Okay, 
Now, something else has changed. Uh, everybody's got to love naming uh, changes, right? So you've heard me call this thing a Netscaler a million different times. Technically, I should have been calling it a Netscaler ADC, uh, but now it's formerly the Citrix ADC. And so uh, kind of depending on where you're at version-wise, 11.1, 12.0, 12.1 versus 13.0, uh, it's going to be a Netscaler ADC or it's going to be a Citrix ADC. Also, traditionally, we would say that the ADC comes in three different editions. And for uh, many generations, it's been standard, enterprise, and platinum. We've now got that being called standard, advanced, and premium. The concept is going to be the same, tiers one, two, and three. Add more features as we go. Uh, oftentimes, you're going to find different things that will be in, uh, uh, that will work their way into those uh, uh, different tiers. But the concept of tier one, two, and two, and tier three will stay the same. Uh, it's just a little bit of a uh, different name for it. So those of us that have been working with Netscaler Platinum Edition, we're still going to start working with the uh, Citrix ABC Premium Edition. Does that mean we're doing anything different? Probably not. Does it mean our feature set is any different? Probably not. Uh, but just be aware that there are some changes that come with the uh, licensing side of it. Uh, uh, also, what we've got is uh, we've got some changes kind of coming from the 32-bit uh, uh, versus 64-bit. And so when they came out with the 12.0 version about uh, two years ago, uh, one of the big things is they brought with it a 64-bit version. And so this is really big for those of us that are using features that are RAM constrained. So when we come in and roll out the Netscaler, there are certain functionalities like integrated caching and front-end optimization and admin partitions that uh, we have to have enough RAM to really be able to go in and uh, unlock all the capabilities. And with a 32-bit operating system, that can become a little bit of a constraint. So moving into the 64-bit uh, era goes in and gives us the ability to address more RAM and uh, can go in and alleviate some of the constraints with uh, these features. So uh, that was something they came out with in 12.0. You go in and open a support ticket to be able to get access to it. Now you should be able to find uh, those versions in 12.1 uh, and 13.0 uh directly from your my Citrix account so you can go in and download your firmware and be able to go in and uh, upgrade to these uh uh 64 bit versions to be able to take care of some of the uh uh changes that we're uh, seeing here now here's where we're going to get into some really neat stuff that uh uh is not necessarily something that's uh that well understood or maybe not necessarily something that's been that well communicated and uh, so we got lifecycle announcements. So what we've got here is uh, net scalers and ADCs and life expectancies, uh, which uh, some of us, you know, we latch onto a version. We say, this is a great version. I'm going to use it until um, you pry it from my cold, dead fingers. Well, um, that might be great in theory, and we might kind of uh, hope for that. But we know that at some point, uh, software is going to age. Okay. I happen to be a huge fan of Windows XP, but um, Microsoft says we shouldn't be using that. Uh, so eventually I moved on to Windows uh, 7. And guess what? Eventually Microsoft says you shouldn't be using that. Times change. Same thing with Netscaler firmware. Now, the good news is Citrix has actually put together a really nice uh, matrix here to go in and say, hey, look, here's your favorite versions. Here's what we're going to do in terms of uh, maintenance and uh, support. And so uh, going back, uh, this is probably about what, eight years, uh, eight to nine years worth of uh, Netscaler firmwares here. And uh, so you got to draw the line somewhere and say, well, we can't keep supporting this and adding new features to old code. And so what they've done is they've gone in and kind of put this together. So things that we uh, uh, are probably familiar with is 11.0 and 11.1, uh, still uh, somewhat popular. 12.0, going back a couple years ago. 12.1 from last year, and then I don't have 13.01 here, but uh, you would see that that would be a, uh, a new part as well. And so what you've got is you've got this scenario where we're coming out with these different versions, and this is actually uh, pretty much every single year. Right? And uh, so you've got to go in and say, well, you know, if I just grab one of these and stick with it, what am I going to do? Right? And uh, so what Citrix has done is they've provided some great um, guidance on this. So earlier in the year, they went in and said, we want to make you aware of a couple of things. 
And so what they've done is they've gone in and said, when we roll out a version and it ends in .o, then you can expect three years of support after the initial release. Right? So for those of us that have fallen in love with 12o, um, then they go in and say, okay, when that came out and then uh, down the road, we're going to add uh, three years of support to it. And then they came out with 12.1 last year. Maybe you like that. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're an early adopter. Maybe you're waiting for it. But what they've done is they've said the versions that end in dot one, you get five years of support. And so uh, you will go in and kind of create some weird areas here where uh, something older is supported uh, longer than something new. But it does kind of give you an idea of uh, what we can expect down the road from uh, uh, Citrix. Uh, they've got 10.5 that doesn't fit into that model. It was just kind of there. And uh, so they went in and made up a, a uh, date for it. And so they've gone in and kind of thrown this out and said, okay, uh, April of next year. Uh, and I believe they say uh, tentatively. And so what you've got is they're coming in and kind of saying, uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to support this through a, uh, a certain level of uh, time frame. And so uh, you've got uh, 12.0. And uh, they're going in and saying they're going to support this through. I think this is a uh, to be determined date, but uh, they're saying probably like October-ish. Uh, and then maybe a year beyond that uh, will be the end of life. So what you've got is this coming out in um, 2017. Uh, 2018 picks up a little bit of steam. And then you got 2019 and uh, then that's it. And then here you've got this coming out in 2018. And uh, so we're going to kind of hold on to it. And then you can kind of see that it's going to be supported through uh, uh, 2022. Okay. Uh, and so what you've got is you've got this guidance here for how long are these uh, changes going to be uh, or these versions going to be made available. Now, something else that comes up with this discussion, I see a lot of people that come in and say, well, what version of the Netscaler should I be using? Okay. And uh, that's always a tricky thing when you come up to somebody uh, and uh, ask that because it's really going to depend. And uh, so instead of just saying, here's a specific version, use this, uh, because uh, like Rich said, this webinar is going to be recorded. And so 20 years from now, somebody stumbles upon it and they're going to say, oh, well, Matthew said that we should be using version 12.0. Uh, that's probably going to be out of date and that would be an antique and, you know, uh, all of those things. So you can't really go in and say, here's the version definitively that everybody should use because what happens if it becomes unsecured? What happens when it becomes unsupported? So the guidance that I have always given is when Citrix comes out with something new, you should probably go in and take a look at it. And you should go in and evaluate it and be a little bit careful about being an early adopter. And so there are certain things that happen when they roll out a new version of code that uh, can be a little bit tricky. And so I usually prefer to wait for about six to eight updates to that code. And so I like to see six to eight updates. Um, and then I feel like that that, that code is uh, probably uh, generally uh, acceptable to go in and use. Uh, now, two things. Number one, does that mean that all new versions of code are bad? And the answer is absolutely not. Okay? In fact, there are new versions of the code that are rolling out cool things. Remember, we just talked about BLX. If that is something that interests you, then yes, go use version 13.0 because it gives you access to B the uh, BLX for the first time. That's not something that we had in the past. It's there now. It's there today. You got to go with the uh, new version to be able to take advantage of it. So as they come out with new features, if that feature is a selling point, then by all means, that's the new version of the code that solves your problem. And so I definitely understand jumping in and going in and doing that. Uh, if there's not necessarily something there, I recommend a little bit of caution. Let's wait for the uh, versions to get a little bit more stable. And then let's jump in and uh, uh, start using it, maybe after about uh, six to eight updates. Now, that is advice that I have always given. Okay, I'm not talking about 12.1 versus 13.0 or 12.0 versus 12.1. That's advice that I've always given in general. Guess what? Citrix has come up with an awesome way to actually put that into words. And so what they've done is they've come up with phases. So when they roll out a phase or a new version of the code, it's going to go out as a feature phase. So right now, they just came out with version 13.0. Guess what? It's in a feature phase. And what they're doing is they're going in and saying there may be new things in here that you might like. 
and you might want to jump in and use them. And it also means that they're adding to that. Okay, so we're going to have the initial build of 13 L. Uh, and then we'll get a second build and there may be new things there. Some people that go in and say, well, I don't want my code changing. Well, that's fine. There are stable versions, probably of the previous version okay, that you can go in and use. And they're going to be supported for a certain amount of time. We just talked about that. But if there's something that you need, guess what? The feature phase is Citrix saying, hey, we're rolling out new features. These might be solving your problems. And if that's what you need, then I definitely uh, urge people to take a look at that and consider it. Just be careful because as you jump into a new version of the code and you've got new features, you may need to go in and actually be updating that about once a month or once every other month uh, to go in and stay on top of those changes. Okay? And so uh, if we get into a feature phase, we should expect that there are going to be changes. That's a risk that we should be willing to take. And for the most part, it's going to eventually get us to where we need to be. For those that need a little bit more stability, what happens is we go through this feature phase, they roll out six, seven, eight updates to that code. And then they say, okay, this is what we want this code to do. And it enters what's called the maintenance phase. And so what happens is this is where they go in and say, this is what this version of the uh, uh, product does. And then they go in and they start fixing bugs. Okay? Or not that they fix bugs, but they continue to add stability and things like that. And so uh, they're not going in and adding new features. They're going in and keeping that as a good, solid, stable version of the code. Uh, and then they'll continue to do that up until uh, your end of uh, maintenance. And so where I've always gone in and said, wait, they've now gone in and actually said, what are you looking for? And so what you've got is you've got uh, these different uh, versions. And I'll just show you the uh, downloads page here. Uh, what you've got is you've got version 13.0. And uh, you've got the initial release came out on May 17th, and uh, it is a feature phase. And so what happens is there's cool stuff. And if you want that, here's the version for you. Yeah. What does that say about version 12.0? Uh, I mean, 12.1. We can go in here and kind of look. And uh, what you've got is you've got it coming out in 2018. Uh, feature phase, feature phase, feature phase. Little changes here and there. Maybe there are selling points to that. Maybe there is something in this feature phase that you need then by all means, that's the version you should have gone with and kept up to date with it. Today, 12.1 is now in the maintenance phase. And so this is considered a much more stable version. A lot of the things that they wanted to do have been ironed out. It's a great place to go. You'll see this uh, back here with uh, 12 yeah? Uh Going back a little bit uh, further back, you've got uh, back to 2017, you've got uh, your feature phases. And they roll out updates and add some stability and cool things like that. And then about a year ago, uh, a little bit less than a year ago, we go into a maintenance phase. Right? And so for a lot of people that say right now, today, uh, yeah, you want uh, 12 build 58 or uh, 59, one of these, uh, or later. And uh, you can kind of see where that becomes good advice because Citrix is saying, we're done adding uh, new features to it. We're working on increasing the stability of what we've got. And so there's some great things that they've done as far as the uh, how we label the product and how we go in and uh, address certain issues. We've now got an ability to go in and look at that, look at the code and say, is this in a maintenance phase uh, or is it in a feature phase? And so uh, some people will jump in and kind of look at that and see uh, some different changes. And uh, maybe that's a selling point for why to go to it. Maybe it's not necessarily something you need, and for stability, we stay at a uh, maintenance phase until uh, we're going to reach that end of support. So some big changes that we run into in that regard. Okay, so a couple of things that we're going to start talking about that uh, actually are changes. And one of the big changes that we've been dealing with uh, or worrying about for the past couple of years has been the policy engine. And uh, what we've got is we've got a policy engine on the next scale. We actually have two of these. And what they do is they go in and they identify interesting traffic. And uh, what we do is we identify interesting traffic. And then we've got cool features on the next scaler that do things with that interesting traffic. And uh, so part of this is the uh, next scaler has gone in and kind of changed this a little bit over time. And so the classic engine 
was how we originally identified interesting traffic. And it uh, really just looked at web traffic and really just headers and URLs. Yeah. Uh, and then what we've got is as they want to make the Netscale more powerful, we needed a policy engine that could look at more than just web traffic and more than just basic headers. So they came up with the advanced policy engine. So if you look at the changes between Netscale 8 and 9 and 10, it was a migration of features from classic engine to the advanced engine. Okay. Now, almost everything is using the advanced policy engine um, for things. And so they're going to start calling it the uh, default policy engine. So when you get to version 10.0, uh, we're using the default policy engine. The three big exceptions are authentication. Uh, they've got a feature called content filtering, and they've got the feature called the Netscale Gateway. Those are a couple of features that still use uh, the uh, classic policy engine. So you kind of need to understand both of them uh, in your uh, modern Netscape. Uh, now, what's happened is as we move into version 12.1 and newer, Citrix is going in and uh, deprecating the classic policy engine. So they're going to go in and say these things that we've been using have got to change. And so what you've got is you've got authentication. Uh, they are trying to go in and push you from using the basic uh, policy engine or the uh, classic policies. Uh, to go in and using the advanced policy engine. They use the advanced policy engine with what's called advanced authentication. We'll talk about that here in a second. Here's content filtering, and it uses the classic engine, but there are better and newer features like Responder that can go in and do uh, these uh, same things with the advanced policy engine. So they're basically deprecating that feature and saying there's new and better ways to do this. And then the gateway has got uh, some neat functionality to it, there's a lot of moving pieces, and so it makes sense. This is the last thing to go. And so most of the functionality has been migrated from the classic engine to the advanced engine. And so uh, we're seeing some major changes in the gateway. Uh, there's one big headache in there that I'll kind of talk about, and they're changing the way that we go in and deal with certain things, and that's going to lead to uh, pretty much whatever we were doing still being able to uh, function in a modern gateway environment. Yep. And where we run into a big problem with this is uh, the functionality of authentication. And so uh, what happens is when we roll out authentication, it's usually let's define where we want to authenticate to and then uh, use a policy engine and say uh, when. And so we go in and we basically use this uh, NS true to say always. So we create authentication policies for uh, management of the Netscaler. We create authentication policies for management or for remote access through the Netscaler gateway. And we say, let's authenticate here. And then we use the classic engine to say, when. And uh, what happens is uh, we want to get away from the classic policy engine. So part of this is uh, we need to go in and actually switch from using classic engine to uh, advanced engine. Uh, so with this true value here, it's uh, pretty straightforward. This is what classic uh, always looks like. This is what the advanced policy always looks like. You come in and use a true instead of a NS true. And uh, so what happens is, as we move from classic engine to advanced engine, some of these pieces will change. One of the cool parts about this is that they've got a uh, capability of switching over to the advanced policy engine and an advanced authentication mechanism. And so it's no longer just, oh, let's go in and do this. We can use these advanced policies and we can go in and create what's called in-factor authentication. And so the whole way that we do authentication is not gonna be where do we authenticate to, it's gonna be the set of conditions that define when and how. And so I think we're gonna go in and see some big changes to this. Now, speaking of big changes, okay? One of the selling points for version 13.0 is that they've really put a big emphasis on trying to make in factor easier. So as we say, do advanced authentication, as we say, use the advanced policy engine, as we say, there's stuff you used to do and there needs to be a new way to do it, they've got some really awesome functionality to help you with this. And so uh, for those that have to go in and do um, in-point analysis, uh, which is where we're scanning the end user device and saying, okay, if you meet certain conditions, we treat you one way. If you don't, we treat you a different way. 
that used to be a couple of different classic engine features. Now it can just be in factor. In factor is look at it. And if we see this, then we're going to do this. One of those, then we're going to do can be the authentication. And so uh, there's a lot of really advanced functionality that's coming out with this. It does require a different level of thinking. Yeah, but I will say that in the 13.0 version, they've done a great job of going in and actually uh, making this a little bit easier to see and really kind of helping you structure this. Now, for those that are in the situation where you've got to go in and you've got classic policies for something and you've got to uh, change them, what you've got is you've got a functionality called NS uh, uh, Peppy here. And uh, so we can go into shell and we can run this command. And what it will do is it will allow us to plug in how we were doing something. And uh, then it will tell us how to do it now. So for instance, uh, I've got uh, my environment in here and I've got uh, some new tools. What I can do is I can come in here to my Netscaler um, whoops, and jump into shell. I'm already in shell. And I've got the command for this. And it tells you you can plug in an expression. So you can just go in and list out whatever expression you want. I just use the uh, true value here. Looks like that. And so that's just a basic expression. And then what it does is it tells you in the advanced policy engine what that's going to be. And so we can go in and use this to help us with a lot of that conversion from classic policies uh, to advanced policies. And so uh, what you've got is you've got some different things going on here to really help you kind of focus in on how to move forward by getting off of uh, what we've done in the past. And so uh, this is a tool that's been around for a while to go in and help you. You can also use this uh, widespread on the entire config. So you can go in and do uh, pull up your config file. It can look for all of your classic expressions and uh, then go in and convert them. And so uh, it does a couple of really uh, neat things for us in that regard. Yeah. So a couple of tools to help us as we move into the new era uh, where we shouldn't be using the classic policy engine and we need to migrate off of it. Yeah. Now, something else that I want to throw in there is a big complement to the application delivery controller is application delivery management. So back in the Netscaler era, we actually had two products that we kind of started off with. An old school one is called Command Center. And so Command Center was really designed to make it easier for us to manage the environment. And so what we did is we went in and tried to manage the environment. Uh, if we had multiple Netscalers, it was a great tool to see all of them in one place and let us do some neat stuff with it. Now, uh, we've got that migrated into what was called the uh, MAS Appliance Management and Analytics System. And the management came from Command Center. Same thing can be said about Insight Center. This is a tool that came out with a few years ago to look at what is going through your next scaler and uh, then provide analytics about those traffic flows. And so as we push more stuff through the next scaler, this piece becomes more and more valuable to us. And so they've merged them into one product starting in version 11.1. Uh, and these versions go along with the Netscaler. So you were using Netscaler 11.1 at the time. They came out with Management Analytics version 11.1. You've got uh, the ADM uh, and the ADC using version 12.1. Moving forward, you're going to use version 13.0. So 13.0 of the Netscaler or ADC and 13.0 of the Application Delivery Management. And it is a tool that combines the management side of things and the analytics side of things. And so it goes in and does a lot of neat stuff for us. For instance, it can go in and do automated backups. Uh, so we can go in and say, talk to our Netscaler every 12 hours and do a save config and copy it off the Netscaler. So if something happens, we can go in and view what's going on. We've got the entity state. So what does my environment look like? Is everything working? Do I have problems? Um, how is that supposed to play out? And so we can go in and see all of this from one place. And so what they've done is they've created a really powerful tool that brings a lot of your management functions into focus. So I've got a Netscaler. Looks like that Netscaler is in good shape. It's got virtual servers on it. It's got applications. I can dig in and see all sorts of valuable stuff about what's going on here. Right? I can go in and look at individual pieces. So what am I seeing with load balancers? So I can see all load balancers at a glance thanks to this. 
I can go in and see uh, all of my uh, service objects. I can see my service groups or my servers. And so I can manage one NetScaler or multiple NetScalers all from one place. Here's SSL. Uh, we used to be concerned about certificate management. So are things good? Do I have problems? I can see that at a glance. And so this is a tool that really goes in and does a lot of management consolidation to show us some really cool things uh, that are going on. So this is the new version. This is the 13.0 version. They've kind of really refined the GUI. They've really gone in and kept this uh, uh, getting better and better so that it makes our job as administrators to administrate the environment a lot easier. Uh, also, guys, uh, if this is something that's uh, interesting, we've got a, uh, uh, a Citric class, the one that I'm teaching this week. So the guys that are in class with me uh, this week, uh, this is what's on tap for tomorrow, is going in and actually looking at how to use this. So we will go in and take a look at the MAS appliance or the application delivery management tool and go in and take a look at how do we go in and consolidate a lot of this management. So the CNS uh, 320 class or the uh, 319, this is actually a core component uh, of uh, something that we go in and actually do training on. So uh, if this is something that you're not that familiar with, uh, we can go in and kind of show you a little bit of how to go in and use that. Also on the analytics side of it, you've got all sorts of valuable stuff that's coming in to your NetScaler uh, or your uh, ADC. What is that traffic? And so we've got the ability to dump this off to ADM and see what's going on through here. And so we can look at your web traffic, we can look at your HDX traffic, uh, if you're doing Zenapp and Zen Desktop. And so there's some neat stuff in here that we can go in and uh, uh, look at. Okay? Now, I wanna go ahead and tell you about one really awesome uh, thing that's in here. Okay? And so as we go in and start looking at new things, okay? uh, I had somebody go in and refer to this as uh, HDX Insight uh, 2.0. They got that from a uh, Synergy presentation. Uh, they're actually calling it lightweight HDX or high performance HDX. And so when we talk about app flow, which is this whole idea that stuff's going through the net scaler and we need to dump those statistics off to a product like the MAS appliance so that it can analyze what's going on and tell us what's happening. And so we can very easily come in here and say, okay, I've got traffic flows. What are those traffic flows telling me? And so we've got the ability to go in and look at the next year and say, I need to know what's going on here. And so we can go in and say, grab these traffic flow statistics and uh, tell me what uh, is happening here. This is something that's been a part of Insight for quite a while. So this is a huge reason that people were using the Insight Center back in the day. This is a huge reason why people use the MAS appliance. Okay? But there are some risks to this. Okay. Uh, and so probably one of the big things a lot of people complained about is they go in, they roll this out and they say, I want all sorts of cool information. And then what happens is you configure it to say, show me cool information. And then as we get traffic flow, what's going to happen is we're going to go in and really peg the CPU on our net scale. And so there is a lot of overhead and memory leaks that go along with that functionality. And so a lot of people in the past have been very concerned about using AppFlow on the NetScaler uh, with Insight Center or even MAS or the NetScaler uh, or the, uh, the application delivery management tool. The good news is they've gone and revamped this and really changed the way that we're going in and uh, delivering these statistics. So now what happens is we can go in and actually grab these traffic flow statistics uh, somewhat independent of uh, the way that we've done it in the past. And so they've come up and really revamped this and uh, come up with a way of alleviating a lot of that overhead. So when we go in and roll this out, uh, especially with the uh, HDX Insight, they're going in and creating a separate ICA channel to gather up these statistics and then deliver statistics. So instead of your net scaler having to go in and calculate all this stuff on its own, it can really go in and just be a uh, traffic manager of performance statistics. And so we're actually seeing this uh, reduce the uh, CPU load on the net scalers. It's going in and giving us a lot of the same capabilities, but at a significantly lower CPU overhead. So where we've been worried about uh, using app flow and core dumps, we've been worried about random reboots. Uh, we're starting to see some of the new versions uh, not have that problem. 
Uh, so you've got to have, if we're talking about uh, the uh, HDX here, you've got newer versions of the Citrix receiver. Uh, you've got to have ADM uh, 12 one or newer. You've got to have uh, the uh, 12 O version of the Netscaler, uh, as well as the uh, uh, a current release. Uh, they say 716, 717 or newer of uh, Citrix virtual apps and desktops. That's where you're going to go in and start seeing those products really play into this 2.0 version of uh, Insight and be able to really go in and do this without a lot of the uh, performance uh, headaches that we've had in the past. So a huge uh, benefit and a huge win for everybody that's doing HDX and HDX Insight and being able to go in and kind of see a big improvement uh, uh, moving forward. So a lot of neat stuff on the horizon. This is not something that's rolled out uh, uh, and documented that well, but it is in there if you're going to take a look at it. And you're using these versions of software, you're using these versions of ADM and the ADC might be something that you can go in and uh, take advantage of. Okay, so with that being said, uh, I'll uh, turn it back over to uh, Rich and uh, see if you guys have any questions. Hey, thanks, Matthew. Um, so uh, one of the questions is about the firmware upgrade. Can you can you upgrade directly from 10.5 to 12.1 or even 13? Uh, great question. Uh, can you? Technically, yes. Uh, usually what I always say is, uh, do we actually have a version of our config that we're trying to protect? So if you just spin up a Netscaler and it's got 10.5 on it and there's nothing you care about on it, yes, you can take it all the way to 13.0 or 12.1 or something like that. If it does have a config on it, usually you want to step your way through that process. So take 10.5 to 11.0 and then any changes that are in there, 11.0 will sanitize those and update that code accordingly. And then you can go from 11.0 to 11.1, 11.1 to 12.0, and then however far you want to go. And so if there's something that you're doing config wise and you want to make sure that it's intact all the way, you do need to kind of stair step through there. If it's just upgrading for the sake of upgrading so you can start off somewhere, yeah, you can definitely pick uh, whatever version you want and jump directly to it. Okay, great. Um, next question, are there updates after EOM for security? Uh, good question. I uh, want to say that there are. I've uh, gone in and seen where they've gone in and said, okay, this is end of maintenance. And then uh, for security reasons, they do go in and actually uh, update those. Uh, I believe there's some legalese in there about difference between end of maintenance and end of life. Uh, and it uh, does go in and relate to that. And so uh, they won't be going in and adding a lot of the uh, stability of the bug fixes. But for security reasons, we have seen them go in and actually touch uh, uh, some of the older products to go in and uh, make that uh, uh, still valid. But uh, there is that end of life. And so we kind of see that as the hard stop for where they're going to go in and kind of draw the line on that. Okay, great. A uh, couple more questions. Uh, Netscaler 13 training. Uh, when do you anticipate this? Um, great question. Um, it's hard to say. We'll probably uh, see a, uh, another uh, build or two come out and then uh, probably see uh, something uh, in the uh, near future. Uh, Rich, do you have, I know we just moved uh, hosting platforms on that. Do you know anything about uh, uh, a migration from 12.1 to 13.0 on the training side? I don't. Uh, typically, you know, they'll, they'll refresh the course. Um, you know, maybe like once a year. So uh, it, as soon as we have a roadmap on that, we'll distribute. Uh, you know, we'll distribute that information in a in an email or a newsletter. Um, okay. Next question. Uh, ADM requirement was uh, VD VA seven point sixteen. What if we're on 715 LTS? Uh, yeah, great question. Uh, I know where that's coming from. We were talking about the uh, Insight 2.0, and uh, I mentioned that some of the uh, uh, requirements for that were uh, Citrix Receiver 410, which is newer than long-term service release. Uh, the long-term service release is 4.9. Uh, same thing with Zappins and Desktop. 
Uh, you've got uh, long-term service release 715. And part of that is they go in and say, here's what the product does. Here's what we want to make stable. That's what it is. And so we're talking about a feature that has come out since that 715 designation. And so they're not going to go in and crack that open and actually adjust it. So uh, it will be part of the current releases, 716, uh, 17, and then uh, uh, virtual apps and desktops uh, builds. But they will not be going in and adding that back to uh, the uh, long-term service release. So it's not there today. When they come out with the next uh, LTSR version, uh, I would anticipate seeing that uh, baked in. Okay, great. Uh, we actually have a few more questions. We'll, we'll keep going until uh, 1130. Um, and if we don't get to your question, we'll, uh, we'll email you. Um, HDX Insight 2.0, is that something that has, that has to be enabled using 12, the version 12.1? Um, also, does using Logstrom versus IPFIX affect the performance? Uh, great question. Uh, a couple things there. Mostly it's going to be about, uh, do you have all the pieces in place? So I don't think there's anything that you have to do necessarily when you go in and actually get uh, your ADC to the right version and your ADM to the right version and your receiver and your back in uh, Zenap and Zen desktop. Once they're all using a version that supports it, you should be able to go in and see it. In fact, great point here. If you look in the release notes for version 13.0, one of the cool things that they've done in the ADM is let you see what's not capable of using Insight 2.0. And so you can go in and actually see where you've got deficiencies and not using the new stuff. And then you've got the ability to go in and say, let's not do old stuff. Let's make everything go in and do the uh, new stuff. And so it's got some uh, help with the uh, compatibility of uh, moving forward on that. And so uh, uh, not necessarily anything that you need to go in and do other than get all the pieces in line and then the new software can use it. And then we're seeing where they're taking steps to help you get off of the old stuff that may not necessarily be supported. Okay, thanks, Matthew. Okay, so we do have several other questions, but we're out of time. So what I'm gonna do with these additional questions is I'm gonna email these to you, Matthew. Um, and maybe uh, at the end of the day or before the end of the week, you can, uh, you can reply to these questions. Um, so, uh, so Bill, Ozzy, James, I, I have, well, James had a comment, but uh, I, I have these additional questions here and we'll, uh, we'll get back to you via email. Um, uh, so we really appreciate your questions. We appreciate you taking the time to attend our webinar. Matthew, thank you very much for uh, taking time out of your schedule to present this. Uh, once again, stay tuned for um, an email that will have a, a link to a recording of this webinar. And also stay tuned for future webinars. Um, we, will, uh, we will keep you notified of additional topics. Uh, we are going to be having a Nutanix webinar uh, within the next couple of months. So stay tuned for that. And uh, I think we are going to uh, sign off and wish everyone a good day. So Matthew, thanks again and uh, have a great day, everyone. Thanks. Thank you.